the information about GCMAF. Tell us about this particular protein. Okay, well, GCMAF is a human protein. It's a human body part and a human right. We all make it if we're healthy. But disease can block its production. So there are, although 5 billion healthy people have GCMAF inside them, there are about a billion who can't make it because the disease blocks it. It treats 50 diseases that we know of successfully, in two, including terminal stage 4 cancer. It was discovered uh, 25 years ago, and since then, 200 scientists have written scientific research papers on it, so it's quite a well-understood molecule. Mm -hmm. And um, we've supplied 9,000 people through about 350 doctors, so it's got quite a good basis in the scientific and medical worlds. Right on. So this is something that the body does produce naturally, but also you've been able to, uh, I guess, synthesize it or extract it and also provide it as a medicine? Yes, we extract it and we supply it as a, as a, as a protein. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And tell us about the body's production of it. Where does this happen? It, is there a limited supply? Well, uh, GC protein, which is also called vitamin D binding protein, is about 3% of our blood, and it's made in the liver. A billionth of a gram of your GC protein is converted into GC MAF in your body. And what actually happens is a T cell from the immune system comes along, takes one sugar off a GC protein molecule, and then a T cell comes along, so you've got a B and a T cell, takes off another sugar molecule, and the remaining molecule um, is then a GCMAF molecule with only one remaining sugar molecule attached to it. So that's how the body makes it. And of course, a billionth of a gram is a tiny amount, but it has a massive effect on the body, and the immune system doesn't work without it. Hmm. This was discovered 25 years ago. Who discovered it? And I mean, there has to be indications that there's been some kind of marginalization or quarantine around this information because it seems to be something that spits right in the face of the big pharmaceuticals. Yes, they don't like it at all. Um, there were a number of scientists working on something called CSF1 in the 1980s. And in 1990, the, the, the uh, scientist, uh, Dr. Yamamoto, PhD, renamed it GCMAF. And since then, there have been 200 scientists involved. So the, it's been concealed from the public for 25 years by the medical and pharmaceutical industries. Right. So what does GCMAF look like under the microscope? Have you watched it actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with diseases and fight illness? Well, <clears throat> the nearest thing we've done to that is extracting GCMAF is a 22-step process. It's very, very easy to get wrong. So unless it's tested, you have no idea that you actually made GCMAF at the end of it. We actually put our batches through nine tests. And the, um, the, the first two are sterility, but the, the last three are activity. Because the last two are most, the most interesting. We take human immune, sorry, we take human breast cancer cells and put them in a petri dish. We then add human immune system macrophages. Absolutely nothing happens. We then add the latest batch of GCMAF. And that activates the macrophages. And in three days, the macrophages eat all the cancer cells. And we published that in, um, <clears throat> in a video, which we put on YouTube. We got 5,000 hits in the first year. Yeah. Gwen Stefani sang my favorite rock song at the same time, It's My Life. She got two million hits. <laughs> <laughs> so the final experiment we do is exactly the same experiment, but we forget to add the macrophages. So we have human, um, human breast cancer cells in a petri dish, nothing happens. We add the GCMF, and now the cancer cells cannot be eaten because there are no macrophages there. So the GCMF turns the cancer cells back into normal healthy cells and again it takes three days and again we put it on youtube and we got even less hits on that i think we got about a thousand 
Wow, man. So a 22 step process. Are you extracting this from healthy people who are producing a lot of it? Um, no, we actually make it make a thousand times as much as is normally there. So uh, there's a fairly limitless supply in other words. Right on. So where does Nagalase come into the picture? Cause this is the flip side of the coin, if I understand correctly. Right. So if you get weak, you know, you house gets repossessed or you get pneumonia or something goes wrong, that gives disease a chance to grow and take a hold. And if it grows enough, that disease can send out the enzyme Nagalase, which blocks production of your body's GCMF. And, you know, so Nagalase is basically all bad. You don't want any of that. Gotcha. So this sounds like an incredibly important medical discovery. I am a little curious. Do we come in contact with Nagales any other way besides something that viruses produce in the body? Um, that's the only place that we know of it. I mean, there are a number of diseases which are very clever things. They know that in order to enter the body, they have to destroy your body's defenses. And the defense they destroy is your GCMF. And, you know, there are a billion people in the world who just can't make GCMF because they've got too much Nagalase in their body. Fascinating, man. And so if they had the GCMF, that would be a complete Nagalase inhibitor. That would keep it from taking root in the body at all. Uh, oh, yes. GCMF will prevent the production of Nagalase. And that is why the diseases have to wait until your body becomes weak. Because if your GCMF is strong it will defeat the Nagalase. Wow, yeah. So GCMF sounds like the holy grail here, like the true engine of the immune system. It's surprising that this was kept quiet for so long, but I guess one criticism that comes up in these situations where we're given new medical information and something is being sold, and it sounds a bit like a miracle cure, it works on so many things, critics say the body is too complex and there just aren't any miracle cures. I'm sure you've faced those types of criticisms before, but how do you typically respond to that? Well, you know, GCMF is a natural protein which helps the body cure itself. It's as simple as that. It has no side effects. It is the king of immunotherapies. Hmm. And are there, are there ways we can increase our GCMAF production naturally in the body? If it is a natural thing, how can we make sure we have enough of it to, to not get diseases? Well, if you're healthy, your GCMAF will be healthy. So you've just got to live a healthy lifestyle. You know, don't eat too much sugar because that causes a number of diseases. In fact, cancer only eats sugar. And there are a lot of diseases that depend on sugar to exist. You know, tobacco is not the big problem here. Cancer does not eat tobacco. It does eat sugar. Wow. Yeah, I, I'd heard people say that too. I wondered exactly how much truth there was to it. Also, I've heard um, if you keep your body in an alkaline state, that too will, will make an environment where cancer can't really survive. That's right. There are, there are over a dozen ways of curing cancer, and that is one of them. And normally, if you're not use, using GCMAF, you've got to put five or six of them together to succeed. But GCMAF has... Um, 20 brilliant actions in the body to everyone new you know it it um it rebuilds the immune system and it activates macrophages but we published we've published 32 research papers of the 120 research papers published on gcmf an embarrassingly large 32 of them are ours mm -hmm. and when we saw those those experiments where we test for the activity and we could see the cancer being eaten and the and the cancer tumors being turned back into healthy cells we then realized more was happening than just those two things and um, we then did experiments where we found that gcmf inhibits angiogenesis that is to say it stops the blood supply to tumors it causes a apoptosis suicide of cancer cells it reverts the cancer cell phen phenotype to no normal cells. That's where it turns cancer cells into no healthy cells. And it reduces the metastatic potential of, hu of human cancer cells. So that is to say it stops secondaries. But it also does a few other things 
unrelated to cancer. It increases energy production at the mitochondrial level, which is relevant for MECFS and also for autism. Um, it improves human neuronal metabolic activity through CMP signaling, which is relevant for autism, MECFS, multiple sclerosis and uh, ALS. Uh, it counters toxic effects, including cadmium, and it abolishes neuropathic pain due to neurooxidative stress. So there are 11 things we've already published that, um, that GCMF does. Wow, man. It seems like, yeah, it's a real seriously important protein that hasn't been talked about a whole lot. And you mentioned having a healthy diet. What is eating healthy? Of course, no sugars. But what does that mean to you? Because we hear so many different ideas of what eating right really is. And unfortunately, we don't get any real education about that growing up with all the hours we put in. Do you subscribe to a vegetarian diet? Do you think meat is important? What's a, what's a good diet in your eyes? Well, firstly, food is your medicine and medicine is your food. You know, it really is. It's far more important than drugs. Mm -hmm. If you want to cure yourself of a disease, of a disease, food is far more important than any drug that's ever been made. And in fact, if you get your food right, you won't, you won't catch any disease at all. But we have found with our, with all our patients except autism, um, they, they pretty well all have low levels of vitamin D. So we always recommend 10,000 IU of vitamin D a day. Mm. Don't eat sugar, don't eat carbohydrates because carbohydrates turn into sugar in your body and eat meat, fish and vegetables, salads, eggs, proteins. That's, that's the perfect diet. And of course, 10,000 years ago, that is the diet we used to eat, the caveman diet. We invented farming 10,000 years ago. There was no cancer at all before farming. <laughs> farming brought it brought it on as the first cancers found in bones thousands of years old was 10,000 years ago when when farming started and then 150 years ago when we started eating sugar the amount of cancer shot up again <laughs> and then when we started using um, frequencies in our houses like um, telephone base stations and telephones against our ears and all those sort of things then it took another the curve of cancer took another curve upwards. So that's what causes this cancer. Right, yeah. There's so many poisons in our society currently. I definitely think the cell phone thing has some legitimacy. It's sad, though, because I use it constantly, and I'm in a bit of a denial about the fact that it might be harming me in a pretty serious way. But you mentioned vitamin D being important here, and vitamin D binding protein is what makes GCMAF. Does sunlight help at all? Yes, you need sunlight. And, you know, all these scare stories about melanoma, which I have to say GCMF cures pretty easily, um, you know, you shouldn't listen to them. We need sunlight because mm -hmm. that's where our vitamin D comes from. Right, yeah, very important. I've